Hey guys, in this week's episode, we're going to be dedicating it to gear. We get a lot of questions about what we use when we go chucker hunting, so we're going to be breaking down all the gear we used last season. Alright guys, well before we get to the gear dump, everybody knows that the number one thing you have to have on any hunt is a subscription to the Reels and Ridges YouTube channel. Go ahead and get yours right now. Alright guys, for the first part of the gear dump, we're going to be going through our hunting vests. And we're going to start in the front of the vest here with the most important part of any hunting vest, beside the bird themselves, shotgun shells. We use these Fiocchi shells, that uh, number six high base. We've been shooting three inch shells, which is actually a first for us. They have a little more knockdown power. Alright, so I'm going to move on to my side pockets here. First thing I got is my dog watering bowl. So I like to bring a little bowl uh, on the hunt so that I can give my dog water efficiently. I don't have to carry as much water because it's just a lot more efficient when the dog drinks it. I have something similar that I keep in the back pocket of my vest. It's not collapsible like that. It's just a household Tupperware dish. Actually has a chucker feather in it. All right, <laughs> staying with the dog theme. The next thing I got in my vest is my dog GPS tracker. Um, for those of you guys that follow the channel, you know that my dog Doyle is deaf. Uh, so I keep this kind of inexpensive tracker on him to make sure that if he gets lost, I can find him. Uh, so I don't have to carry this whole big case. What it basically is, is two uh, separate little like fobs. One of them goes on his collar and the other one goes in my pocket. Uh, and then through Bluetooth, I can track where he's at on my phone. If you're just looking for a way to find your dog if it gets lost, um, this is great. Okay, so the next thing I got, chucker feathers uh, all over the place. I got my, my flint here, so I carry this just for emergency purposes. We always go out with the intent of coming back to the truck uh, before it gets dark, but you never know when you're gonna need a fire in an emergency. So it's just, I like carrying this instead of a lighter because lighters never seem to really work uh, when you need them to, uh, matches get wet. And this is about the most reliable thing I can bring with me to be able to make a fire when the time comes. And another great thing to bring with you is a prepared hunting partner because I don't carry anything to make a fire, but Jordan does. So I always make sure to bring him with me in case I get lost and need to make a fire. I would recommend bringing me always. <laughs> we talked a little bit about water for your dog. You gotta have water for yourself as well. I bring this Mountain Ops Nalgene, usually has Mountain Ops in it. Um, I also, for my dog, I carry just like a regular water bottle or chucker feathers. So I usually bring this 32 ounce 50-50 uh, vacuum insulated water bottle. Usually have Mountain Ops in it, a little bit of ice. And then for my dog, just like Reed, I, I got another one or two bottles of water for her. All right, continuing here. Um, another thing that we bring on our hunts is a uh, charging bank. Um, so this one's made by Jackery. Uh, this is uh, just something to keep all of our stuff charged that we need charged. Maybe just to use Onyx maps so that we can make sure whatever land status we're looking for is good. Or even if we're just using it to, uh, you know, figure out where the next good canyon is. Next, food. One of my favorite snacks to bring on a chucker hunt is a lar bar. So I like lar bars because they're, they're healthy. They're made from good ingredients usually just fruits and nuts, and they come in like a billion flavors, so I never get tired of them. I'm not quite as healthy as Jordan is, and my main go-to when we're in the field is candy. <laughs> Lots of candy. I always got my vest full of something sweet. My recommendations on candy, I don't have any candy in my vest now because I ate all of it, but don't get anything chocolate because that's gonna melt. Most of the time it's like, uh, like chewy fruit stuff, high chew, starburst. Um, I like sour stuff, sour Skittles. Basically, whatever, you know, you guys know what candies are out there, but candy is key. There's nothing better than when you've been walking for a long time and you take a break and, you know, you get a nice pull of water from your water bottle and you follow it with some candy. All right, next I've got my Black Diamond Headlight. So I have been through a number of headlights over the years, and this is the first one that I would ever tell anyone that they should buy. This is one of those things you really need to work when it comes time to use it. Another thing that I always keep with me is this little, it's actually meant to be worn as a bracelet, but I usually just clip it to my vest. 
It's just a short length of paracord that's been braided. And this is just nice to have because you never know when you're gonna need it. All right, now that we've gone through everything in the vest, we're gonna go over the vests themselves. So I have this Browning Bird and Light vest. I've had this for a few seasons now. Um, definitely smells like I've had it for a few seasons. I'm not really sure. Sweat and, and chucker, I guess. Um, this, I really like how big the back is. It's got that really smooth material so the birds slide in real easy. Down to a deep pocket so I'm not worried about losing birds or jackets or anything like that. Just a couple nice pockets on the back. Really my only criticism of this vest is it's a little big and that's probably on me. I think I bought too big of a size, but it hangs down a little bit below my waist so it kind of gets in the way of my legs. If you do end up going with this vest, just make sure you try it on and get the right size. I think it'll save you a lot of hassle in the long run. All right, and my vest is the Bucks Bags Upland Vest. Um, a few things I like about this vest is it's got these pockets in the front, and so it has part of it that Velcros, so I put my shells in here just so that when I'm running after birds, which seems to be a theme, uh, they're not bouncing out of there, but it also has a pocket in there uh, behind that that's not Velcro, the, so I can easily get stuff in and out. That's where I keep the candy. The back of it where the birds go, very big area, easy to get birds into. I can usually, I don't have to reach around my back, I can just kind of tuck them in the, the front part here because that back pocket goes all the way around to the front, which I like. Um, on the back part here, it has one kind of big pocket in the back, that's where I keep my dog dish. Um, and anything else. I might put chucker in there from time to time too. It's also got these long kind of clippy straps here that I use to put my coat into. I highly recommend the Bucks Bags Upland Vest. So one thing we always bring with us on a hunt is a good gaiter. Uh, so the gaiter is meant to cover your neck and your face, protection from the sun and the wind. This is our fancy uh, Reels and Ridges neck gaiter. We give these away on Instagram sometimes, so if you guys don't follow us on Instagram, check out that page. The other kind of gaiter that we use are these leg gaiters. Um, we wear these mostly on the snow days to uh, you know, make it so that as we're walking through the wet bushes in the snow that um, our pants aren't getting wet. Uh, anybody that knows me knows that none of my chuck hunting trips are complete without my Garmin watch. I take this watch every time I go hunting I geek out on all the stats I get when I come back. I do the map overlay. I look at my heart rate throughout the day. It shows me different speeds that I walk throughout the day. I'm like, oh, I was walking slow here. Yeah, I remember because of the terrain. So it's just, it's fun to get back and sort of relive the hunt through the data. All right, guys, now we're gonna talk about a couple of clothing items that uh, Jordan and I each like. Um, the thing that I'm gonna touch on is this uh, jacket that uh, some of you guys may have seen me wear in the video. Uh, this is just kind of a real light jacket. Uh, it's made by One Rate. Uh, if you guys aren't familiar with One Rate Camo, go check them out. This is the Demand Series Soft Shell Jacket for chucker hunting when you're pretty much hot all the time uh, because you're walking so much. It's nice to have a, a light jacket that um, you can kind of layer up underneath. One thing I like about this jacket are the uh, armpit vent zips. Uh, I pretty much leave those open all the time uh, because when I'm uh, walking and running in chucker country. I'm usually hot, so I'm trying to keep as much airflow going to me as I can while still keeping my skin covered to kind of keep me warm. So um, it's a great, versatile, durable jacket. Like I said, check out One Rate Gear. So the pants that I wore on every chucker hunt this year were these Sitka Timberline pants. These are by far my favorite pants I've ever worn in the field. I really like the suspenders on them. Not only because of the fashion statement, I know what you're thinking, not just because of that. I really noticed how much easier it is to take big steps up onto rocks and things when you don't have a belt that's constricting you. So it's able to, it's able to like keep the pants very loose around your waist but keeps them from falling down. So suspenders are definitely underrated uh, for the chucker hunter. Another thing that I take on most chucker hunts, at least any day where I expect there to be sun, are my sunglasses. Reed likes to give me some grief about these. He calls me Hollywood, things like that. But I don't know, my eyes are really sensitive and I like these sunglasses. All right guys, now let's talk about one of the most important things in the chucker hunting arsenal, boots. Jordan and I both got new pairs of boots this year. We both got different kinds. We both had different experiences, but I think we both ended up liking the boots we got. Uh, so the boots that I went with are the Crispy Brickstall 
GXT. Uh, these boots are uh, super durable. They're very stiff. They're a very stiff boot. If you uh, don't like that, um, these may not be the boots for you, but I like a real stiff boot. The break-in period on these was pretty long. It took me probably five or six hunts to get these things broken in, but once they were broken in, man, I've never had a more comfortable boot. So like Reed mentioned, I also got a new pair of boots this year. I went with the Cantrek Mountain Extreme. So the thing that I noticed first when I put these boots on was the ankle support was incredible compared to anything I'd ever had. It was almost too much. I, I felt like I had ski boots on. Um, I could barely walk in them. Once they're broken in, they're, they're great. All right guys, so the shotgun that I used is this Stoger M3500. This gun is a gun I actually won. Uh, at, a, at a dinner one year. And so it wasn't, I guess, my first choice, but it's been a great gun. I've had it a number of seasons, but with general maintenance, it's been a really good gun. All right, guys, the gun I use for the majority of this year is the Beretta 3901. It's a 12 gauge. Uh, funny enough, I actually also won this gun at a dinner. Uh, before you guys think that Jordan and I are the luckiest guys on the planet, I think those are the only two things we've ever won in our entire life. Uh, it's a great gun. I shot well with it, and uh, I would recommend it if you're looking for a, a chucker gun. I might get a different style. This is like the duck model. You can tell by the camo. It only holds three shells. I don't honestly know if they make another model that holds more shells, um, but I'm really more of a wood stock uh, you know, metal barrel kind of guy. That's really my uh, preference when it comes to the look of a shotgun. Thanks for watching the video, guys. If you're interested in any of the gear we mentioned in this video, check out the links in the description. And don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks again for watching.